Okay, everyone, today's the day we are making beef bacon. And I am salivating just thinking about it. And my husband is gonna walk you through how to season it, cure it, smoke it, and slice it. So go ahead and get your guys' bibs ready and let's get started. I have been so excited about this day, you don't even know. You don't even know. I'm salivating just thinking about it. I might have to put a bib on myself. So, uh, Thomas Cattle Company would like to start being able to sell this product, which is beef belly. Very large piece of beef belly. And this is what you use to make beef bacon. The, the, you, or the navel as is, is a lot of people like to refer to it. But beef belly is just like pork bacon is made out of pork belly, pig belly. That's where you get bacon from. So they said that if we wanted to do a video about it and maybe get the word out that they want to start offering this, uh, they donated this big old slab of belly. And I'm going to cut it up into three sections. Probably about like that, that, and that. The first one I'm gonna do right now is gonna be more of a dry rub. The second one's also gonna be a dry rub. And then the third one is actually gonna be submerged into a pan and with a solution. And I'll, I'll explain how to do all that, but this is gonna be three different ways to make beef bacon. So the main basic ingredients you can get crazy and get into some paprika if you want to get into paprika um, or coriander there's people that like to really bouge it up okay I'm old school I like just basic good old-fashioned cowboy bacon that's salt oh what was the other one? Oh yeah pepper so I like to use basic ingredients the pepper. This is Old Thompson brand, Pepper Supreme. It's got five different peppercorns in there. This is to die for, it's so good, super good. Salt, you wanna use good sea salt. Uh, this is Australian sea salt. It's really good salt and it's very inexpensive and you can pick this up at Costco, obviously, Kirkland. Um, you're gonna need a one tablespoon measure, then you're gonna need a one teaspoon measure a one gallon Ziploc bag. Hopefully I can fit that in there. I might have to improvise. And then you're gonna need curing salt. Little bit goes a long way. Do not overuse this. It's not the best if you overuse it because you will end up with bacon that is so salty. Like it is extreme. Like we're only gonna use for one big slab like that is gonna be one teaspoon of that. Sea salt, we're gonna use three tablespoons or three and a half, it depends on how salty you like your bacon. So experiment for yourself, but the standard is about three tablespoons. Pepper, you're gonna to wanna to use roughly one and a half to two and a half uh, tablespoons. It also depends on what you like. Me personally, I'm gonna go with two and a half tablespoons. I'm doing three tablespoons of sea salt, one teaspoon of cure, curing salt. So, we gotta get this out of the bag. I'm gonna get a piece cut off of here and get it up on the table and we'll move to the next step. All right, so just to not make the video boring, I went on ahead and already ground up the two and a half tablespoons of pepper. Now, we're gonna add three tablespoons of sea salt. Ruh, ruh, roar. Doesn't fit very good. I got it. I got it. One's it gonna make a mess. Ha, perfect. There one. I got this. There's that. Now, look at how pink that is. 
they so, color it that way so you don't confuse it with regular table salt because you don't want to eat it. It is actually just made for curing meat. Yeah, so get it on there and give her a little tap of ruski. I'm probably going to go just a, a smidge more because as you can see, if she comes over here, do a side profile of that. Holy cow. Pun intended. Um, this is a pretty good sized slab. Um, so the recipe that I know about would be a little bit smaller slab than that. So I'm going to go just a small little smidge over. About, and, about like that. And this is, brand has the least amount of red food coloring that you can find, the Anthony's. Yeah. I'll post all this stuff in the description, but this is the brand that has the least red food coloring. Um, that's the main reason why we actually went with this brand, because we did some research and we didn't want the red food coloring, but unfortunately for curing salt, they dye it pink. Well, not only that, but this one was in the top three of the highest rated ones out there, so. I That's, think it was one of the least expensive too. Yeah, it was actually pretty inexpensive. Yeah. So now all we're going to do is mix this up real good. And then we're going to start rubbing it onto the meat. And it's really just that simple. Like I said, I like pepper, so I go a little bit heavy on the pepper, but don't get scared by that. All we're doing is trying to get some of this flavor of this mix into the surface area and you know a little bit deeper than that but most of it's going to be just on the surface area but it will make its way in there as it's curing in the fridge because you got to leave it in there for about three to five days after we put this rub all over it and you want to put it all over real good but once you cover the whole surface of it uh, you're going to put try to fit it. Obviously, we're not going to be able to fit it in that because that is not going in there. So we're going to use some uh, cellophane wrap. I'm going to wrap it real good in that. So we'll make a bed for it and fold it over and then fold it everything upward this way because this is going to make juice. And then once you do it once, you're going to want to do it the same on the opposite side and make a, a bed the other way. And do your best to seal it up and then... If you have one of these or any kind of pan that's big enough for that to sit in, I would put it in there so you're not making a mess all over your refrigerator because this thing is going to put off some juice while it's curing. And once a day, once a day, you have to flip it. Just one flip. You, you have to do it. If you do that, you're really going to mess this up. It, it's really not that hard. Just set a reminder in your phone for about the time you get home from work or whatever to flip the bacon. So you're gonna to wanna to flip that over once a day during the time that it's in the refrigerator, which is three to five days. So it depends on how salty your bacon, you like your bacon as to how long you're gonna leave it in the fridge. Also the size of meat. I think we're probably gonna go four days on this one. But get you some cellophane uh, or get a smaller slab. I mean, that is ginormous. I, I am so excited about this. So. Uh, we're not going to bore you with all this. Uh, we're going to do that whole time lapse thing and I'm going to snap my fingers and we're going to be back and it's going to be done. Ready? And just like that. Uh, yeah. So just make sure you coat all the way around and it'll, as you turn it, make sure you got something to catch all the extra so you can dump it back into the bowl and that way you have enough. But I mean, as you can see, I still have a decent amount left over. So I'll save that for the for the next one. But now we're gonna wrap it in the uh, Reynolds wrap, whatever, saran wrap, whatever you wanna call that. We're gonna put that in the uh, saran wrap and it's going in the Frigidator and we'll be back to see how this does in about four-ish days. I don't know, I'll keep an eye on it and just see how it does. Um, yeah, so we'll be back. All right, so. Get it all wrapped up in the cellophane. We'll put a couple few layers that way. Hopefully it doesn't leak while it's in the refrigerator. And remember, flip it once a day, uh, three to five days. Just keep an eye on it and try it early. It's still gonna taste good no matter what you do. Three, four, five days, doesn't matter. But 
each, each extra day adds just a little bit more saltiness to it. So if it's not quite salty enough at day three, try day four. If that's not enough, obviously day five. So we're gonna put this in a pan. We got a few of these and it's going in the frigidator. And there we go. All right, so I told you I was doing three, two, two dry rubs and one that's gonna be submerged. Uh, the second dry rub, I'm gonna throw a twist on it. I'm gonna use garlic. Not a lot, but it's just granulated, dehydrated garlic. I like using garlic with beef just because it tends, as, it, as it's cooking, it tends to absorb a lot of the fat that's being rendered and it swells up and absorbs all that flavor. So I, I really enjoy using garlic on beef, but I'm not gonna put too much in there. I'm gonna do two teaspoons, well, maybe about two and a half. A little bit goes a long way when it comes to garlic. All right, so I'm gonna get this all mixed up. I'm gonna move on to the next slab. I'm gonna do it just like the first one. So you guys already know how that process went. So I will see you on the one that we're gonna submerge because that's gonna be a whole different thing. We are okay. We're gonna do one that's gonna be submerged. So this one, what we're doing here is you want, I what I went with, because it's a smaller slab than the, the recipe than that I was gonna use. So I just did it according to the portion size. So I went with a cup and a half of sea salt. I went with a teaspoon and a half of the curing salt powder. Yeah, it's curing salt. Um, and then I went with uh, four tablespoons of my pepper. No garlic in this one. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna grab a cup and you wanna use cold water. You don't want hot water. We're gonna fill this up about, well, probably halfway with water to start out. Oh, that instantly smells good. And uh, once we get this about where we want it, I can probably do right there for now, just so I can show you guys. But now you're just gonna take your hand, and yes, I washed my hands. But you can feel the salt granules in there, and you wanna move them around until they dissolve. Get it all nice and dissolved in there. It does take a minute, so we'll probably click to the next step here and do some movie magic for you instead of boring you with this. All right, so now that we're all done with that, it actually didn't take as long as I thought. So just keep mixing it up until there's no more salt granules and go maybe just a few seconds past that just to make sure. Now, once you get that all ready to go, you're gonna take your slab. This is the thickest part. That's why we decided to use this one for this particular thing. And just set her down in there. Okay. Once you get it down in there, just kind of push it down in pretty good. Don't worry about the bottom, not getting any of the stuff because it, it is going to absorb everything. It's going to soak in there. So now we're going to continue filling this up until it's completely submerged. And we'll do some high speed movie magic right here too. One, two, three, go. Okay. So we got that. And as you can see, it's kind of buoyant. That's because all that salt in there. So we're just kind of moving around a little bit. Get it all mixed up. I probably should have got a bigger pan. I didn't realize exactly how thick this was. That's my bad. Feel free to make mistakes alongside me. It's okay, it's allowed. So there is one little trick here. So we're gonna put the cellophane over it and it's gonna go in the refrigerator. This one is gonna take longer. This is a whole different process. So this one has gotta go in the refrigerator for 10 to 14 days. Again, experiment. See how much salt 
flavor you like at 10 days versus 14 days, but it's up to you. But this way it does take, I mean, you could probably get away with eight days, but uh, I think I'm gonna do right at 10 days just because it is a slightly smaller piece than the big recipe. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna find something to set on top of here. We'll wash it real good and sanitize it, set it on top and put cellophane over so that the cellophane's pressing down and holding this down underneath the liquid. And we'll be putting it in the refrigerator and we'll let you know how it turns out. But that's basically all there is to it. Uh, now, the next part is all the same video, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the next time you see me, uh, we'll have the other two slabs out and we'll be rinsing them off and getting them on the smoker. And I'll explain what you do there. Uh, be right back. All right, guys. It's technically day four and a half. I'll let them go a little bit longer, but here we have them. These are the two dry rubs we did. Um, this one's the salt, pepper, garlic. This one's salt, pepper. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unwrap them. And I flipped them every day, like I told you. Um, and you'll, you'll tell every day they feel just slightly more firm. And that's just because they're curing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on the sink here. Make sure you use cold water. Do not use warm water at all. Get them unwrapped. There's gonna be a little bit of juice in here. And I'm sure you noticed that uh, every day when you were flipping them, you can see the juice build up. If I can figure out how to open this. Well, all right. I did too good of a job with wrapping them. Oh, wow, that smell. Oh, that smells awesome. Woo, look at that. Okay. All right, set it down in there. Pop this out. Yeah, it is so much more firm than before we did it. Everything tightened up on it. That's wild. So now, I know you're thinking, oh, you're rinsing off all that flavor. No, it got absorbed in there. Get all this rinsed off. You don't gotta get crazy. I mean, there's still gonna be some residual stuff on there. You're making a mess. I know. I was trying not to, but it is where it is. Okay. So now, and you're going to repeat this, so I'm not going to show you on the next one because you only need to see one, but you can do that for whichever one. Or if it's just the one slab, then just do the one slab. Um, you're going to put it, I just like to use a cooking pan with uh, these grates on top of it so that it's not sitting in the moisture as it's draining off, but you're gonna take some paper towels and you're gonna pat it dry. And then once you're done patting it dry, you're gonna move it back into the refrigerator and I'm gonna leave it on the, both of them on this tray and slip it in the refrigerator and let it sit overnight and uh, dry out a little bit. And then tomorrow is gonna be the, the cook day. This is all real basic, simple, easy stuff. Nothing difficult about this at all. Anybody can do this. Even if you have uh, an inexpensive cheapo smoker, even one of them electric fridge smokers, you can do this. You gotta babysit it. Um, something you're gonna want that works really good 
it's a really good tool to have is a instant thermometer. So we got this one off of Amazon and look at that. It's got a magnet on it. <laughs> um, we got this one off of Amazon. It's a uh, Lava Tools Javelin Pro Duo. So all you do is just flip it open. It turns on and it gives you instant within just a couple, like a second and a half, two seconds, it gives you the temp. Um, and the temp sensor is like right up here in the top quarter inch of the, the tip of it. So you get that in the depth that you want it at and it'll give you your temp that you, you're wanting to know about. But having an instant thermometer is pretty important. Uh, a lot of smokers come with a, a built-in thermometer that you can use and, and that'll get you in the ballpark. It will but they're not super duper accurate. You wanna get a good one. This one here is about 55 bucks. Um, there's other ones out there that have even higher ratings. All this one, this one's, I think it was 4.8 out of like 5,000 reviews. But uh, there's other companies that have even more higher end ones that are almost instantaneous as soon as you touch it. But uh, you really wanna have an instant ther thermometer uh, to be able to keep track of your temp. So you wanna get this thing all dried out on the rack, get it in the fridge, let it sit for 24 hours, and we'll be back tomorrow to explain the rest. All right, today's the day. Got them out of the fridge, here you go. They're looking pretty good, they firmed up nice. Like, it was real squishy before I put the rub on there. And I've never done the dry rub. I've done the submerged one before, especially making like jerky and stuff, I, I like to use a, a, a water-based solution uh, and then mix all your seasoning in there and let it sit for a couple hours in the fridge so it gets that saltiness to it and everything. But that's crazy how firm they are now. That's nuts. But so we're gonna take them, put them on the smoker. So follow me. And our smoker is a Green Mountain Grill. It's the Jim Bowie. We've had it for a while. Uh, it's very well broken and seasoned. Um, the pellets I like to use, these are my favorite ones. I have tried an awful lot of different brands, even some really expensive ones. Yes, the expensive ones do taste ever so slightly better, but I can't justify the cost. I mean, you're talking 40 to $60 for a uh, same size bag as we got here, and these are only 20 bucks. Um, these tend to not, you don't burn through as many pellets as quickly. Like it, they last longer and you still achieve good temperatures and everything. And the smoke flavor from these for the cost is awesome. They're so good. Haven't tried it on bacon yet. So this will be an experiment. Uh, I might have to go back to the Applewood uh, ones that I found from Green Mountain Grill that I like a little bit better than the Traeger. Um, so I'm using a smoke tube as well. Right there, all you do is just take a couple handfuls of the pellets, drop them in there, hold it up, and uh, put a flame to it just to get it nice and hot. Once you start to get it smoldering a little bit, just blow on it until the embers get going. Then you just lay it down in there, nice and easy, and it'll just keep smoking and just keep going through, but it'll add a little extra smoke. That way you get a little bit deeper penetration with the smoke. So. Uh, I got a rib rack up in here. I'm trying to get them elevated. I want it up as high as possible so the heat is a lot more even. So I'm gonna rest them on top flat like this. Uh, probably a little bit, maybe the halfway point through the uh, temperature process because you, you only wanna bring them up to 150 degrees on the internal temp. So you wanna have a, uh, some sort of thermometer. This one has one built in. So I can, I can really keep track and this grill also has Wi-Fi on it and I have an app so I can keep track of it from inside of the house. But you really wanna keep an eye on it. You don't wanna go more than a couple degrees past 150, but 150 seems to be the sweet spot uh, on the internal temp. So we're gonna set these up here. And to start out, I'm gonna put the, the fat side down. I know there's fat up here, but this is the main part. This is the outer part of the the belly or the navel area. So we'll put that down first. A 
we're not trying to fully cook these. All we're doing is getting smoke on them right now and bringing them up to temp. They are gonna shrink and slightly kind of shrivel up just a little bit. That's fine, it's supposed to do that. It's not anything to be concerned with. And again, don't be scared to try this. This is so easy to do. I know it seems like there's a lot going on here, but really a lot of it is just the time as far as just the waiting game. Once you get them seasoned and everything, you get them all rubbed down, put them, wrap them, put them in the fridge, just let them sit. Give them a few days, four or five days, three to five days, uh, pull them out of the refrigerator, rinse them off, put them back in the fridge, let them sit overnight, put them on the smoker. Once you get them up to temp, take them back inside immediately um, and get them in the refrigerator because you want to cool them down immediately. You don't want to let them keep cooking because even though you took them off the smoker, the temp is still going up on the internal part. That's why 150 is so crucial. So once you hit 150, get them off immediately, get them back on a rack, get them back in the refrigerator for two, three hours until they come back down to temp and firm up again. Once they do that, then you can take them over and, I mean, I recommend a, a food slicer, but if not, you're gonna have to figure out a way to cut them as thin as you can to, to make them into as thin a pieces to be able to cook them a lot easier and also have that whole bacon effect. Um, the temperature I'm running, a lot of people like to run them, their smokers, what? and they use like hardwood smokers. They don't use pellet smokers. Most of the big companies, they have these big industrial commercial ones that have racks in them and they hang all of them in there. And uh, those are a different thing. Pellet smokers, uh, most of the videos and stuff and recipes I've come across, you wanna run them on a slightly lower temp for some reason. I still don't know exactly why, nobody's explained why, but it seems to work better. So I'm running this one at 190, so I can get a little bit more smoke penetration because the wife and I like that smoky flavor and uh, it's just personal preference. So I'm gonna run it at 190 with a smoke tube and I'm gonna get this temperature sensor in here. So you wanna go right up the middle on the thickest part and we're gonna go with this one here because this one is the thickest one. And then I will bring my temperature probe. I have an instant thermometer that I'll bring out and I'll keep an eye on this one too because we really don't want it to go over. If this one gets done early, I'll pull it off before that one. But you really wanna watch both of them evenly. And like I said, I'll keep an eye on it once it gets per about 100 and probably 110, 115 degrees, I'm gonna flip them just to make sure that the smoke coverage is nice and even, but also putting them up towards the top like this, it evens the temperature out, because down low you have hot spots in most grills, like one side is usually hotter than the other. So just be weary of that. Um, some people like to even put a pan underneath and fill it full of water to help regulate the temperature. Um, I, I don't have to do that on this one. It actually does pretty good as long as I get them up high. So right here's where they're gonna stay. Just gonna let these things run for a little bit. Get it back there. All right. All right, we'll see you guys shortly. Uh, I'm gonna just let these go and keep an eye on them and I'll check back in once I get them up to temp and put them back in the fridge and we're gonna be eating these things here pretty quick. Be right back. All right, a couple hours have passed and we're at temp. We're just hitting 150. Look at that. That looks so good. All right. This is not a fun part. My other gloves haven't showed up yet, so I'm having to use these. But we're going to try to do this quick. Hopefully painless. Let's see if I can scoot these out a little bit. Some new gloves coming that are insulated and heat resistant, all that fun stuff. Woo! Woo! Okay. There we have it. Look at that. Oh boy. That looks delish. 
Okay, so now these are gonna go in the house. We gotta put them in the refrigerator immediately. Get them cooled back down. You want them nice and cold because it makes it a lot easier to uh, slice them up in your meat slicer. Or if you gotta use a knife, I feel bad for you. Because it is a little bit of a pain. Well, I guess you can open the door. That works. The other thing you can do with these, by the way, you don't have to do just bacon. You can actually cut them off into, you know, like an inch thick steak and have bacon steak. I just found some videos about that and kind of thinking about trying it. God, it's got such good color on them. They smell amazing. I'm gonna put it in the other way. That one's a little bit taller. Bingo. All right, and those go in there. Uh, I'll just use the instant thermometer and I'll keep checking them, but once I get them down around 50 degrees or, or lower, then I'll pull them back out and I'll get to slicing and then we get to eat them. I haven't got to do or taste dry rub bacon yet. So we're gonna experience that together. We'll be right back. All right, the day has finally come. We are here. Uh, didn't get to it yesterday. As you can see, I'm wearing a different shirt. Um, represent, what, what? <laughs> um, so the bacon didn't cool down as fast as I was hoping for. Uh, the lowest it got down to last night and it was too late to do the video was uh, 62 degrees on the internal temp. So I figured whatever, we'll do it today. So we got the Super Slicer 5000. That's not actually what it's called. It's a best wood. We got it off of Amazon. They're 350, 375 range right around there. Um, this one had the best reviews. Uh, we've already used it once to slice up some uh, chicken breast to make some chicken chips, which is another video. <clears throat> really good. So uh, yeah, this thing does all the way out to 12 millimeter thick, which is eh, just shy of a half inch in, in thickness. And you can do it in each one of these numbers is a whole millimeter on thickness. We're probably gonna do them around, I'm leaning towards three. I think three would be a good thickness to where it's not super crazy. Maybe even, you know what? I'm gonna try it at four first. But you waited long enough, here we go. Our refrigerator smells <laughs> so good. It smells like bacon. <laughs> Look at those things. That looks so good. All right, well, just because this one's a little bit more uniform on the edge there, and this one's kind of wobbly, uh, we'll slice this one up first. Man, they are so firm now. So, let's fire this thing up. Maybe if I remember how to use it. I think everything's good. I've only used it once and I've never had a food slicer before, so. Uh, grab a big plate. Oh, and by the way, we are tasting this today. Don't mind my shorts. <laughs> All right, so we're sitting right on four. I'm gonna do this one. on that side so you want to cut them lengthwise you can do width I guess if you really wanted to but you're gonna end up with some the the meat runs lengthwise on the the entire navel or belly so it, it, if you want it to look more like bacon you want to cut it lengthwise and you'll know what lengthwise is when you do it and you can tell it's really easy to tell we're gonna run this. Oh, that's big. Holy cow. That doesn't go over any further. Um, you have to trim it first, I think. I'm gonna have to trim that. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna cut off a steak. I'm gonna cut off a steak. Because I've seen a couple videos of people cutting these up after doing this and cooking them as steaks and it's bacon steak and they're doing it on ribs too and calling it beef bacon ribs. 
I mean, it's got the word bacon in it, so it's gotta be good. All right. Get out my super ultra mega sharp Ginsu knife here. Don't look at the brand. It's legit. So I'm just gonna go right about there. Oh, look at that. Okay, had a little interruption there. Anyway, I already cut off the end piece. If you wanna come around and look at that, look at how good that looks. That is awesome. All right, let's get it on there. Get some slicing going, because I'm salivating. All right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use this thing. That ain't gonna help us, so I'm just gonna hold it. First couple little bits there. That's a legit piece there. I cannot wait to cook that up. <laughs> that smells so good. And voila, with Movie Magic, it's all done, all sliced up. And this is only two out of the three slabs. We still have a whole nother slab to go. That is a lot of bacon. The house smells absolutely tremendous right now and we're heating up the griddle and we're gonna cook some up and try it for the first time and give our honest feedback as to whether we messed up or if we just knocked it out of the park so we'll let you know hang on a second all right we got our trusty blackstone electric griddle here i'm gonna grab two pieces of the salt and pepper bacon beef bacon and I'm gonna grab two pieces of the salt pepper and garlic beef bacon and cook them and we're gonna give it a try I just want to see if it sizzles just like bacon when I put it on there oh it's instantly I already smell it Right, this one here is just the salt and pepper. This one's the salt, pepper, and garlic. And yeah, it's a little on the thick side, but we like thick pork bacon too, so that's how we usually get it when we order it. But That mainly smells like bacon to me. It doesn't, I don't really get a whole lot of, I mean, there's just a subtle little bit of beef smell. That's pretty wild. Hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna get this cooked up and then the, in the next scene you'll see, uh, we'll have it on a plate and we'll be trying it out. All right. It's done. We're getting ready to taste them. Look at this. It just looks like really big pieces of bacon. And then what does it smell like? You were outside <laughs> while I was cooking, so it's, you didn't smell it. I didn't. It smells like bacon. It, it smells, smells like bacon in here. It legit smells <laughs> like bacon. It looks like bacon, just really big pieces. So these two pieces are the salt, pepper, garlic. These two are the salt and pepper. So. Just because my curiosity is getting the best of me, I want to try the one with the garlic first. So, here we go. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening right now? I need to try a piece. You need to try a piece. What in the heck? It's still hot. Hmm, let's see. You're not going to believe your taste buds. 
<laughs> what does it taste like? <laughs> it tastes like bacon. It tastes like bacon. Mmm. <laughs> mm. That's super good. And the, the, the garlic isn't overwhelming like I, I thought maybe it might be. It's actually extremely subtle. Mmm. What? <laughs> That's weird. That is super good. It's salty all the mm -hmm. way through, just like normal yeah. bacon. Mm -hmm. And that was a dry rub. I thought for sure there was no way that salt was going to make it all the way to the middle. Whoa. I am seriously floored right now. That is tremendous. And they're big old thick pieces. Mm. Oh my god. Whoa. Mm. I am not mad. 100%. That is, oh my god. That is wicked good. Mmm. Mmm. No offense, but that's better than what you get at the butcher's shop. You should really do it yourself. Sorry for my wife putting the camera right up in my face while I got food everywhere, but. <laughs> and now we're gonna try what? This, this is, is just the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper one? Yeah. And you can taste the pepper too. It's very subtle. There's definitely. The saltiness is the main thing, but it's salty in a good way, like bacon. I think you got mixed up. This one tastes garlicky. Oh, it is garlicky. There might have been a little bit of garlic taste on that one just because the grease was all mixing together. That is garlicky. I, mm, I don't know if I like that one as much. Mm. That's garlicky. Oh, I dig that. My husband loves garlic though, so that's probably why he likes this one. I like the salt and pepper one the best, but that's with everything, honestly, that we make. I rather just have salt and barely any pepper on anything. So that's probably why I like this one the most, the salt and pepper one plain by itself. Mm, that is so good. It's still good, but that's, I mean, if you like garlic, I like the salt and pepper one better. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's super good. Mm. That is weird. It doesn't have like a beef beef. Like if you were flavor. to blindfold somebody and have them taste this, they'd be like, it tastes like a like fresh a different kind of bacon, but it's like tastes like fresh bacon. Yeah, like, like super fresh bacon, but yeah, high quality definitely bacon taste. High quality bacon, like wow. And oh look at God. how much we get to eat. <laughs> so excited. Hmm. Well, we still have that other one that we gotta wait until, what is it? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So the 28th, I should be able to pull it out of the fridge on the 28th or 29th. And then uh, I can rinse it off pat it dry, put it back in the fridge overnight, and then uh, let it dry out and firm up. And then I can put it on the smoker and we'll give that one a taste and we'll add that into one of her next videos, but that'll be the end of this one here. So beef bacon, that's legit. That is truly legit. Not trying to exaggerate nothing. I wanna thank wow. Tom, Thomas Cattle Company for donating the, the beef belly to us to make a video about it. Um, I thought it'd be a lot harder and it really wasn't. It's time consuming just cause you gotta wait a few days, but the prep and everything, it really not bad. Slicing would be the only thing, it'd be a little bit tricky, but I mean, everybody knows somebody that has a meat slicer. So you can just go over to their house, borrow their meat slicer, slice it up and you get beef bacon. Uh, I got some other things in the works that uh, I'm gonna experiment with as well. So we'll keep you posted on that. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.